Good morning, Phil. This is Randall. I wanted to uh, shoot this short video to familiarize you with a couple of operational details not previously covered. Starting at the front here, let me show you how this headlight switch works. The left position is uh, all the lights are off except the brake light still works. The second position here where it says P, that means you get all the lights except for the headlight. So all these other lights come on, including the tail light, uh, but the headlight is off. When you put it to H, the headlight is back in the equation. On the left side, you got this uh, traditional <laughs> horn button, <clears throat> but it has a flash to pass feature, flash to pass. If you push it to the right, it will flash the headlights. It's kind of a nice Euro feature. The key, this is the third key. It works the ignition, obviously. It works the gas filler, and it also works the seat latch, which is right here. Uh, on the gas filler, works as you'd expect. When you take the gas cap off, make sure you have a rag or something, because it'll be wet on the bottom, and it'll get on your uh, drip gasoline on your tank. These came with a captive chain, but uh, previous owner removed that, which is a good idea. When you have the chain, people are tempted to let it dangle and also not good for your paint. Speaking of gasoline, when you close this door, you can take the key out or leave it in. Just push it there. It's got a kind of strong spring there. It's full of gas right now. It's unleaded, uh, I'm sorry, it's a uh, non-ethanol fuel, which some people call marine gas or recreational gas or small engine gas. I also sometimes use av gas if that's more convenient to use, but whatever you do, don't put any ethanol in it and you'll have way fewer problems with the fueling system. Hall Bikes allows me and you to leave the fuel in it and that's what I'm planning to do unless the driver has different instructions. If he does, I'll have to drain the gas tank, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. On the Petcock, which is a Pingle, it has three positions. This is off all the way forward. Right there is own. Halfway in between is reserve. It's kind of hard to read it, but if you get down there, you'll be able to see the little uh, inscriptions. That's own, that's off. Those are the two main ones. This has a pretty tall uh, standpipe to draw fuel from. So it will go to, it will switch. You'll need to switch to reserve maybe a little earlier than you might expect because on these tanks, the left and the right halves of the tanks don't communicate to each other very well. So if you, if you ride gently, don't do a lot of cornering, you'll just basically consume this half of the tank and this, this half will be more full. So uh, don't be surprised if you have to switch to reserve a little sooner than expected. Here's the choke, this is off. Well, look like that is on, it works really well. It won't take much chuck at all, even when it's really cold. Usually when, you, when it fires up, you can just immediately push that to off and, and you'll be fine. On the side covers, there's a trick to getting them on and off safely. These are reproduction uh, plastic and they're not prone to breaking. The originals were fiberglass and they were very brittle, easy to break. But the trick to getting them off is you start with your hands down here like this, pull out till you get that, first, that lower tab disconnected and then use your thumbs like, like I'm showing to push gently and you get the top two tabs to release. The, res uh, the reverse is exactly how you do the installation. You line up the top two tabs, push those in until they click, then push the bottom one in. Um, these are prone to flying off at speed, like 80 miles an hour speed, or if you meet a truck and get a big blast of wind, so that's why I usually ride with the not painted set because they're not that valuable. Um, if I were going to keep this bike, I would probably devise some epoxy loops on the inside and some sort of tether so they wouldn't fly off. But if you're just putting around, probably not going to be much of an issue. Checking the oil. This is a, uh, one of the innovative features of this bike. It's a dry sump, so the oil rides here, not in the bottom of the engine. There's a little bit down there, but basically this is where all the oil is. 
And to check the oil, remove this dipstick, dry it off, put it back until it just rests there, and then you can take it out and read it. And it's normally about, with a filter, it's three quarts. We'll get it pretty close. You can, you can run it a little bit and then let it sit overnight and then check it. Uh, but it, it should be about three quarts is what it takes. Curiously, it has two drain plugs. Here's one here, and there's one on the bottom of the engine. So when you change the oil, you have to do both drain plugs and put a funnel here to empty the contents of this. Um, in the tail compartment, there is the original owner's manual. It's a, since this was a UK version, it's a kind of a goofy European one size fits all and it's not in great shape. I searched for another owner's manual. I was not able to find one up to this point, but uh, it's there if you need it. It has the legal license plate that I run right now. North Carolina requires that I turn that back in. So when you get the bike, it will have this parade plate on it. Um, in North Carolina, you're allowed to run these sorts of plates if you have a valid plate on the vehicle also. So not sure what Ohio does, but I will deliver this with the uh, parade plate. So I think those are the things that I plan to cover. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks very much, Phil.